Hanun Hor, Yevortho, Yevo Queen, Serpon Men, in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to St. Sarkis Church. For those who are who don't come often to our church, I would like to remind you that this is the time where we give the homily. Uh, this time I will speak briefly in Armenian and then try to speak in English. Sirele Abadatselner. Yerek, Hayastan Yatsara Kelagan Yegeretsin, Donets, Mer Yegeretsu Donatsin Hamatsain, Mer Amenen Garebor Doner and Mega, Tark Panchats, Bartabet Nerudona, Tark Panchats Dona, Mestro Pashtotsin, Sag Bartevin, Yev Irens Ashagerterun, Yev Ein Seruntin Donne, Boronk Gadaretsin, Hai Kira Rukuda, Hai Pupena, Tarkmanetsin Asva Ashuncha, Yev Mezi Hayeru Samar, Devin Karaganutyun, Devin Ein Michotsa, Vorbesi Menk, Sharnagenk Agil Vorbes Haye Gereti, Vorbesi Menk Havortak Tsink Irahet Haye Rendezvov, Vorbesi Astvats Mezihet Hosi Haye Rendezvov. Mesrop Mashtotsi Gadarat. Korza, Hayegretsvo, Yev Hajo over Tigyanki Mech, Chapazans Medze, Vorovedev Arans Iren, Hayegretsin, Cherger Naradal, Ein Inch for Air. Ink Yev Sahak Bartev, Eskatsin, Ait Oreru, Ein Zaner Vijaga, Vorun Matnabazer, Hajo Oburta, Pajnabaza Lalov, Yergu Pajni, Pajnabaza Lalov, Hunagan, Gampizan Taganaste Zutian, Yev Barskanaste Zutian, Yev Irans Hamar Miutian Lava Queen Michotza, Stel Zelner, Hai Kraganotuna. Yevaha Ais Mudadzum Nerov, Yevas Havatkov, Mesrop Mashtots, Ir Nebiragan Ashadanka Eskasav, Vorin Artun Kierav Asuzo of Nutiamp, Merharashk Aipupenam. Aipen Kiminitanaink, Gedestank Vararachin Dara Aipe, Yeverchin Dara Keye. Eskasing Aipov, Astuzmov, Yevgeverchatsen, Keov, Christosov. Astuzos to Rakrutuna and Der Nergae. Mesmesha Chader, Mesrop Mashot Singanain, Borbes Askain Temk, Borbes Askain Heros, Borbes Ein Anza, Vor Kragamutun Stelzelov, Hai Misha with Stelz, and Sevason Polo, Panagana Parjish, Tera with Neren. But Anong poron kurpator va kradis kartatsin, ander es portetsi ulis sevov nail. Yev desnel te mesrop mashtots, zut yegeret saganer, yev zut hoviver. Vorovedev hovagan, madaha kutunere mervats, ink knatsev, ay penkimi kuda cernargets. Vorovedev desav te inchpes, mer jogurta, mer hay jogurta, pamacher askanar. Եվ որպեսի ժողովուրդը մոդենա եկեղեցվո այդ ցանր աշխատանքը դարավ։ Ասիկա հովագան մեծ դեսիլք կենթադրե։ Մեկը որ գրնա դես հասկնալ իրականությունը ինչ է, դժվարությունը ինչ է։ Եվ ինչ տեսակ հիմնական նոր փոփոխություն պետք է եկեղեցու կյանքի մեջ, որպեսի ժողովուրդը վերադառնա եկեղեցի մոդենա աստծո։ Ուրպատորվա կրածիս մեջ ասի, որ պնագան ապար ոյ է մեկս չենք կնար մեզ ռոպ մաշտոցը դար։ Պնագան ապար ոյ է մեկս չուզեր մեզ ռոպ մաշտոցը դար։ Մեզ ռոպ մաշտոցը դիդան է, հսկայ է, անոր չենք կնար մոդնալ ժողովուրդին գարիքը ինչ է եւ աշխատին որբեսի ժողովուրդին քո հացում դան այսօր մենք շատ հաճախ մեր եկեցող կյանքի մեջ ինձ մեզ կսյալ խորաններեն կպարսանանք եւ գսենք ուր է հայ ժողովուրդը ինչու բացակայ է ինչու հերացած է մեր ժողովուրդը եւ պնական ապար որոշ անդերբերություն մգա ժողովուրդի մեջ բայց այդ անդերբերության գողքին նաեւ մեր եկեցող ողմ է թերացում դա Terazat zeng forbes yegeretsi yevegeret saganer. Asorete mesrop mashtots hayt navi meregeretsomech. 
ինչ պիտես եմ եզի։ Ասիկա լուրջ հարցում է, որ ուն ամեն մեկս որբես է գեղեցականներ բետք է բադասխան դանք։ Այսօր ավեդրանի մեջ կարտացին ընդրիկներում մեջ բատվոտ դեղերը կրավել։ Ասունք պնական հարկանք է, որ գդրվի է գեղեցագանին։ Բայց երբեմ են մեր գեղեցագանի գոչումը մի են ասոր վերածված է։ թե ինչպես պիտի հարկվինք, թե ժողովուրդը մ Ամեն պանցկեց հերու երգիրներ կնաց, կնաց մինչև եթեսը ասորեստան, գդանքներու են տարգեց ինգ զինք, որով իտև հավադաց թե իր կործը, իր գադարելի կործը նվիրագան կործը։ Այսօր մենք որբես է գիղեցագաններ, Մեզ հոպ մաշտոցի ոգի են փոքրիկ պաժիմը, որբես է մենք ալ, մեր որերուն, մեր տժվարությունները գարենանք հասկնալ, եվ ասուզո ոգնությամբ լուծումներ առաջարգենք և պոպոխությունները բերենք մեր եգեցո according to Mark. The last part of our reading where describes to us Jesus sitting somewhere in the temple, in the courts of the temple, and from where he is sitting, now I'm imagining things, this is not in the, in the scripture, he is seeing the treasury. Obviously this must have been a box where people would come and they would put money in the treasury. And it seems like it was a public show of who is giving how much money. And money was not uh, paper, and certainly it was not uh, credit card or digital, by the way. It was the, it, the people had coins, and they would drop the coins. And as they dropped the coins, the more sand you made, it meant you are giving really a lot of money to the temple, to the treasury. And a lot of people came and they dropped a lot of money there, obviously. And then came a widow. And this widow dropped two copper coins worth only a fraction of a penny. So the coins that she dropped, it was less than a penny. And Jesus observing this, he said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. This is the statement that Jesus makes. She put more than all the others. This is probably a little challenging, a little difficult to understand. How come that copper coins that is less worth than a penny could be more than the, I don't even know what was uh, the currency at that time, more than the whole currency that people were dropping in the treasury. And I will try to explain this to you, but I will have to tell you that this is not forte because this involves a lot of mathematics. And I'm not good at math. That's why I became a priest, by the way. I'm not good at math. That and also I don't dance. So these are two reasons, reasons why I became a dead heart. But let's try to do the math now. Doing the math, if you have $10 and you decide to give someone $2, that's something that you're giving. And if you have $20 and you decide to give someone $2, who gave more? Obviously the first one, the first one who had $10, right? Because they had 10 and they gave two. Whereas the one who had 20, they gave two, they still have 18, the other guy has eight. Am I okay with the math? Did I make a mistake? Okay, good, you're following me, good. So the lady here, the widow, and let's say a word about the widow. Widows were really marginalized. They were powerless. They were neglected by the society. 
It was almost like a shameful thing to become a widow. And this person who had nothing gave more. She gave everything. Everything that she had, she gave it. And this is really difficult to understand because what's the implication of this? How can we make pastorally sense of what Jesus is teaching us? Let's try to delve into this. This is challenging, I told you. We have to remember one of the words that Jesus says in the New Testament. Jesus says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Where your treasure is, your heart will be attached to your treasure, and your heart will be there. So it's important for us today, as we listen to the biblical reading, to understand, or, or to examine rather, where our hearts are. This is a question that we have to ask ourselves. Depending on that, we will make the decisions in our lives. Clearly for this widow, her heart was somewhere different. Her heart was in God and the temple represented God. And she didn't mind giving all that she had to something that was a lot bigger than herself. I would like to tell you another passage from the gospel. This comes to us from the gospel of Luke, by the way. In the gospel of Luke, we hear, we hear the following. We hear a young man who goes to Jesus and this man is rich and he has a question. He asks a question, he says, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? Jesus answers him, why do you call me good? Because only God is good. Jesus answers him in a subtle way that, if you think I'm a good teacher, think again, because I am God. And he says, you have the law, what does the law tell you? And this rich man says, oh, the, the, whatever the law tells me, I have done it since my childhood. I have done everything that the law requires from me. Then Jesus says, in that case, go and get rid of all your possessions, give it to the poor, and then follow me. At that point, the rich man becomes very sad because the Bible tells us that he had a lot and he drops his head and he walks away. I would like us to focus on this incident from the Bible. In the Old Testament, the idea was that we need to earn our salvation. And if we were successful, if, had, if we had money, it meant that God has blessed us and we are really good people. Those were the visible signs of God's blessings. And some churches, by the way, to this day preach this. I guess they don't know that there's another edition of the Bible, which is called the New Testament. They're stuck in by the Old Testament. That's something for them, not for us. But in the Old, New Testament, Jesus comes and he brings a fundamental change. There's a fundamental change in the New Testament. That the change is God is coming and establishing with us a new relationship. And that relationship is not based on merit. It's not based on what we do, but it is based on God's blessings. It is based on the fact that God is coming to save us. The possessions, the things that we have in life, that's not what Jesus is talking about. Jesus is talking about possessions. Sometimes our possessions they become the things that they possess us. If someone is a perfectionist and they have learned that I have to do everything right to be accepted by my parents, by my friends, and obviously by God, then that person's possession is the sense of perfectionism. 
if someone is possessed by the sense of power that money can bring, obviously their money has possessed them. They cannot, cannot let go of that. Today's biblical message is telling us that there's something much bigger than the things that we have in life. The widow gave more. She had little and she was able to give everything. Look at it in the life of our, our church. The example of the widow is something that is repeated here almost every day. Because we have people here who are just like the widow. They believe that the church is the representation of God. They believe that the church and God is much higher, much bigger than the sense of self that we have. And with that, people come and people give their time. People give their energy, give their resources, give their talents. And this is how we have a thriving community. This thriving community is not the result of one person, but this is collective work that takes place here, my brothers and sisters. And we need, we need to look at what happens here a little bit more carefully. I'm going to give you an example and try to conclude with this example. Imagine now two people. One person is a member of the Ladies Guild who is volunteering, who knows that on this Sunday, for example, is her turn for, uh, for her to come and serve the fellowship hour, which consists of preparing the coffee, bringing food, pastries. It's a lot of work, by the way, that our ladies do every Sunday without complaining. So this lady knows that it is her turn this Sunday. And Saturday, she's not feeling really well. She's tired, she's sick, but she knows that she has said yes, and she doesn't want to let her, the group of people, the ladies guild down, and certainly she doesn't want to let the church down. So she gathers the strength, she bakes whatever she knows how to bake best. She puts all her efforts, all her energy, and then she comes here Sunday morning to set up the table and present our fellowship hour in a way that when everyone walk in, they feel like home. It's not that they are impressed, but they're feeling that this is home. To me, this person is someone who gave and gave more just like the widow here. Now we have a second person who goes to fill their plate with the food that this lady who put her heart into preparing and baking. They grab a plate, they make a hill with the food on that plate, and then they drop a dollar and they walk away. I don't know where you can buy all that food with a dollar. Not even McDonald's will serve you that food with a dollar. Now tell me who gave more? The person who dropped a dollar or the person who put her heart in baking and preparing? These are simple examples and I don't want to sound judgmental. But I want, what I want to tell is that God knows everything. And the question that we need to ask ourselves, how much am I giving to something that I believe in? Am I giving everything? This should be a question for self-examination for each one of us, my brothers and sisters. Because it's so easy to do something half-baked, since we're talking about baking, right? To do something with people see that we're doing it. But only God knows 
how much energy, how much resources we are giving. And that is an expression of our faith. I pray that the spirit of the poor widow will be alive in us so that when we give and whatever that is we're giving time talent resources we give wholeheartedly because our heavenly father sees everything that we do in secret and he rewards us abundantly may the rewards of god be abundant on all of us amen Եվ ու մեզ համարցակացային պարպարով անալսպեր անսմեր, գարտալս կեզ երտավորը կարի եվ կեզ։